Hi, I'm Tony Regan, and today we're going to do a review of the Pacific Car Carrying Trailer for Auto Care Services. So this is a typical example of a Pacific Car Carrying Trailer for Auto Care. As you can see, it's a lot different from some of our other trailers with a fall from heights restraint system to assist the driver so they don't fall off as compared to some of our other trailers where we work from the ground to uh, load and unload and restrain the vehicles. So let's go through the trailer. So this is the cab frame, which is a bit different to some of our other cab frames that we have on some of our other car carrying trailers, whereas it doesn't have a cassette. So it still has the cab frame where a vehicle will get put up there. And the part of the frame actually moves back towards the trailer and joins there. So this gap between the handhold and the restraint system is smaller than you could fit a person through. So that works pretty well. The controls for the trailer, of the cab frame I should say, are both here and the light to show that the cab frame is, is armed and being used. So let's have a look at the rest of the trailer. So from here we can see that we've got your typical Airline, Susie coils, hydraulic lines through to the trailer. And this being the, the main control at the front for the top deck and also the, uh, the pin deck at the front here. And it's labeled one, two, and the, where the actual rams that move the deck up and down, a little bit different to say a H4 trailer where it gets full movement. So in this particular trailer, you'll only get on the Pacific that amount of movement out of the top deck at the front and also at the back. You'll see it only has that amount of pins to move. So there's not a lot of flexibility, but enough to make the Pacific trailer a really good, uh, op easy operation. The other good thing about the Pacific trailer, it has plenty of handholds and footholds for three points of contact when you're climbing in and out of vehicles and down from the trailer to restrain the vehicles. From here, we move to the middle of the trailer. So again, the top deck has that amount of movement, not the front deck, but the top deck has a similar amount of movement to the front. And then you've got the bottom well deck or belly deck as some people call them. And then you've got these little joining ramps that uh, work off you can see there the locking pins that lock those little ramps into place so you can drive through and along the main deck up to the pin deck there. So the controls for this main deck are here and all labelled in this case 345 and you've got the two hands operation uh, of holding in the air pins to unlock the locking pins for the deck as well. As we move around to the back, as you can see here, it says warning crush zone. So be very mindful not to put your body into a, a position where you could potentially crush a part of your body. Some more handholds with the yellow, and as it says there, maintain three points of contact. As we move to the back, here's the rear control area for the, the uh, main hydraulic cylinder that lifts the back of the deck. So you've got, a, again, you've got your two-handed operation to use the levers to push them forwards and backwards to make it go up and down, and then your air pins to actually allow it to move and lock in. The other part to this is the uh, jump up deck, which is that part of the deck that you can see here, which again, operates off this panel here. And then you've got, which is sort of hard to see in here, but this leg down here, which when that rack is, uh, the jump up deck is lifted, it actually has a foothold down further in the trailer along here. And with the correct training, you'll get to understand where that pin goes in to put potentially an eighth car on the, tra on the trailer. So let's go around the back now. So towards the back here on the back staunch, and there's a, a sticker that says no go zone if deck is raised. So we've had times in the past where for whatever reason the deck hasn't uh, been able to be lowered. 
from this point onwards, as you can see, we've got the working at heights restraint system, but from the back there, you don't. So if that deck is lifted up to say, two and a half, three meters high, uh, you can potentially, and it has happened where people have fallen off there. So you don't go past that area at all. And if you need to, you need to uh, stop work. You need to call your maintenance or your supervising people and get the vehicle or the trailer tagged out and come up with a way of doing what you need to do if you're going to work at heights. So here's where the ramps come in and out as well as uh, lowering the airbag. So it makes it a lot easier to drop your height control valve, to lower your airbags, to make it uh, less of an angle to put in, especially smaller and lower cars so you don't get any front bumper bar damage uh, loading on and off. Then as we walk around the rear of the trailer, you'll see that's where your ramps come out, like most of the other trailers, again, through a hydraulic ram. And as you can see here at the rear, this has been set up in transit really well. All of the restraints are locked in place. The deck is locked in place. So it uh, supports those staunchions really well. Even around this side of the trailer, down the driver's side, it's got grip tape on for plenty of uh, plenty of traction when you're working in damp conditions. And also along the side of the the main frame and some extra handholds as well as some footholds to have a look up onto the top deck if you restrain there from a lower point or onto a tall vehicle that might be in the in the belly or the well deck here. And as we go around again, we've got signage to say that it's a potential crush zone. And just think any of these decks are a potential crush zone just because they move up and down. More footholds and handholds all the way through back around to the front of the deck. So that's just a quick overview of the Pacific trailer that we use here at Auto Care Services.